everybody. My name is Bill Romerano. I'm the VP of Finance for SmartCo Inc. You guys thought I worked for IBM. Ha, cool job. Today, I want to take you on a little journey with me as I go through my day-to-day -day functions and some of the tasks that I go through here within my finance role. So, as you can see, here's my starting point. My landing page where I can easily go through all the different tasks that I may have to go on any given point through my day. And even, you know, the possibility of maybe adding a new user to the, the system, maybe adding a couple of new products, all that. And I can even launch into my dashboarding and reporting. But today what I want to do is I want to bring you through by integrating my balance sheet and cash flow. I can also collaborate with my team. So right here, I got a message from my CFO that said, hey, Bill. I need you to go take a look at the numbers for Florida. You know, we're not looking that great. And I need you to make some changes to our revenue plan, kind of bring it more in line with what prior year numbers were, because we're a little off. So as I go through, I can easily now take this information and start putting action into it here. So let me close out of my message here. And I want to start cycling through my different org structures. So I can look at my East region if I want. And then, because he specifically said look at Florida, let me go take a look at Florida. And I can see right here that I've got my analysis that's showing me that I'm definitely way off here. So I believe it was 20%. Let me just check. Yep. I need to go in and reduce my revenue at a high level. So I'm going to bring my sales forecast by just going right here into my KPI call out. So I've got some quick action buttons and these shortcuts that I can do. Just decrease it by 20%. Now it looks a little bit better. Um, obviously, the rest of the team is going to have to do their bottoms up, but at least I've got that target set in place. I can look at my actuals and see you know, my reports and all the visualizations. Everything's changing. It looks pretty good. Uh, so I think that uh, I'm meeting where I need to go. But now, let me see what the impact was on that change to all my different metrics. And if you notice, as I'm making these changes, everything's lighting up blue, because I want to see what's being impacted by that driver change here that I'm making. So I would go through, I made that adjustment for the CFO, and I got some more work to do. So I want to start looking at some of the different areas that uh, I do in my day to day. So I brought in my PL forecast, but now I got to start looking at my balance sheet, my cash flow. I know that I've got a large tax payment coming up in April, I believe. So there's some things that I need to do to make sure that I've got enough cash in the bank to make that payment. So here we go. So when I go through, now Treasury is sending me a message that, hey, you need to change your day sales outstanding to 35. You've got to increase that free cash flow. So I'm going to go right here into my metrics. And I'm just going to adjust it at a high level and see what my effect is. Okay, seems pretty reasonable, but uh, make that adjustment. Let me see what I can do now on my balance sheet. Am I making positive cash? Yep, I'm taking my total assets, coming right back up here. And on my cash flow, yeah, there we go. And there's that million dollar tax payment. So it looks like, you know, by a high level, Making that you know that adjustment to bring my day sales outstanding to 35 days, so I can collect that cash a little sooner, is going to put me into that positive position, and I can see that here in my direct and indirect cash flow. But I really want to now take a little deeper dive to see is that 35 days the right number? You know, I've got some other issues going on with my receivables. And so I want to start looking at my reports and do some exploration to really deep dive into those analytics and understand what's driving my accounts receivable and am I really going to be able to achieve that 35 day. So right here I'm going to go into my reports and I'm going to launch into my accounts receivable dashboard. So in here I've brought in all my information and you can easily quickly see here as I'm looking at my information on my accounts receivable. I can see the breakdown of, do I have disputes on my receivables? In my disputes, how much of that is driving my customers to pay me late on my, my receivables, on my invoices? 
of those invoices that are late or disputed, how many of them are driven through electronic? Or am I mailing out those invoices to the customer? So I'm going to go through and just kind of look at some of the different segments of my business and then what percentage and how many days you know, late am I getting on my receivable payment. So I want to take a deeper exploration into this. So as I go through, immediately I'm seeing just how I'm getting looked at that days late by my disputed items and by my billing type. You know, how am I getting it to that customer? Paper or electronic? If you notice right here on my right hand side, as soon as I went into that exploration, the system is going and analyzing my information for me. So I don't have to do a lot of that heavy lifting. I want to go in and understand, well, you know, disputed moderately drives days late by 38%. Okay. So I'm looking at the information and it's it's going through and diving into my data and understanding the relationships. And now coming back in just plain English, telling me what's going on with the numbers. Now, I've been doing this for a while, so some things are intuitive to me. But there are some relationships that I may not be thinking about. Or the amount of customer billings that I go through with my organization is so deep that you know I'm not going to be able to think of every possible combination. But the system is. So as Brian mentioned earlier, let the system have that augmented intelligence go through. Well, come up with those relationships. And that's what exactly I've got here. So I can look at these things so that, you know, no is the most frequently occurring category of disputed. So it means no disputes, luckily. Um, but it's going to go through and tell me how many items are disputed and not disputed in the data set that I'm looking at. So as I go through and say, can I achieve that 35 days, it's going to look at my numbers and say, well, you know, you've got the majority of your receivables not being disputed. Whew, okay, good. So at least I know that metric is going to help me get down to my 35-day level. But here I want to continue on and start adding some insights in here. Okay, I'm going to open up my reports, but I really want to bring this and get some additional information here. So I'm going to change my visualization. All right, so I'm going to look at my heat map in here. And again, as I go through, if you notice, as I'm making these changes and deeper dive into my numbers, the insights on the side are changing and giving me deeper insights as I go through in those different report types. I also have the ability to ask the system questions because I don't know what I don't know. So, hey, I want to understand what are my days late by state. So as soon as I do that, it's now bringing up my chart. All right, so I, I need to understand my demographic and my customers. I need to understand how, with across my regions, how many days late. Am I having an effect in certain states where I've got an issue? So when I'm trying to get to that right metric and get my cash, I need to focus on certain areas and put a little more attention to those who are going to pay me late and either go call my cousin Vinny, bust a couple kneecaps. Just kidding, just kidding or change something in my business process. Yeah, that's the ticket. So here, I'm going to take my report. And now, I asked about by state. It comes up in my visualization. I can easily see that I've got an issue in Florida. And I've got an issue here in California. So really, that's where I want to go next. So I'm going to take that next step. So I know I've got two areas to focus on uh, of my disputed item and my late payments. So I'm going to start doing some additional exploration, really, to find out some of the relationships in my data. So I can see in here of the data sets that I'm looking at. I've got my days late. Okay, that's that's what I'm targeting. I need to understand how to fix that problem. So of the days late, do I have disputed? Am I looking at paperless billing? Maybe the the location, the amounts. All of those relationships are going to be factors that are going to drive why my numbers are coming in or my invoices are being paid late. So I'm going to go in here and start looking at this. Now, as I go through, I'm going to see here I've got additional visualizations that are being recommended to me. So I can help build that storyboard in here, and I can easily just choose this one right here 
and it immediately brings that right into view. And again, here's those deeper insights. So I'm going to keep drilling in and getting more and more. So the machine is learning what type of things I need to understand and bringing it right to my attention versus me having to go in and try to figure all of this out. Okay? And now, here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to create maybe a, a deeper learning, bringing my augmented intelligence in. So I'm going to bring these advanced analytics. So this new visualization that I want to create, I've got plenty of options, but I want to focus here onto these advanced analytics. So I have my decision trees, driver analysis, all of these available to me. That's going to start taking that deeper insight and driving me into that next level. So as I go through, let me choose my driver analysis. I need to bring a target, so here's my days late. And so immediately, as you can see what's going on, as soon as I brought that target onto my report, it starts bringing these insights for me. So right across the top, it's my key driver analysis. So I can see you know, what items, what drivers are identified here that are bringing the factors that have significant influence on my target of days late. Across the bottom, I've got my decision tree. So it's going and looking at the models to really help me quickly and easily identify some of the rules and the different relationships. But it's also giving me that ability to predict some future events. That's what I need to go and look at. So what am I going to go in so I can go and make those changes and meet my objectives here? So as I go in, I'm going to now look in further at my, my decision tree here. And I can see all of the relationships that's going on, but I can also see the rules behind it. So as I look at that decision tree, and I see all the factors that are influencing my, my days late, I need to understand the rules that are going in and the predictive capabilities of the data that I'm working with. So as I look at here, okay, I can see uh, my top rules, the predicted value, the highest predicted value is looking at items that are definitely in dispute. They are paperless or electronic billing. So in this instance here, it's paper bills. And it's looking at the geography. So it's going to go in and start understanding that deeper relationship in here and start putting rules that it's going to look at my data set, identify items that are mailed out bills that have some propensity to have a dispute on it. So there might be the, the dollar amount, some of the different rules that maybe are causing my customers to dispute their invoices. It's going to look at that historical information and use that in my predictive. And then the two, the two locations we knew of Florida and California. And then it's going to go down and look at the next set of information. Okay, And it's going to give me a predicted value and the confidence level of that data that I can go through and now, as I bring my new information in, it's going to use these rules to then start analyzing that information and tell me where do I need to focus and who do I need to give that a little extra attention to. So in here, I've got these, like I said, I've got my rules in here, but I can also go in and look at my, my sunburst analysis. So what it's doing is taking my information, it's looking at my different hierarchies, it's segmenting it out, and it's slicing that information and the, give me the relevance and that correlation. So the, the different size of the slices are going to show, you know, which is a bigger scale and you know which are ones smaller that I need to focus on. But really, it's going to go in and show me that relationship that I want a deeper drive to, and bring those things that are correlated to each other, and start getting that again deeper insight into my my numbers here. So the proportion of each one is going to bring me that population, and that's going to tell me here what I'm looking at as far as size, dollar amount, relative scale, so I know that's my focus. But I want to go in, do some additional reporting here, and now I want to focus in specifically on my two locations. So I'm creating this new report. I'm going to filter it by state, and I'm going to start off in California. All right, And now I've got my information for California. And next thing I want to do is I'm going to replicate this report, add it to my storyboard, and bring in now Florida. Because I 
identify those two locations, I want to start seeing what's common between the two and what things that I need to focus on between the two here. So now, as soon as I have these two reports, I want to go in right here and compare them. So I'm going to bring these two side by side and let the system start looking at what's common between both of these sets of data and all of the, the billings that I have between paperless billing and mailed out billings. And it's going to give me that insight here. So here, side by side, as I go through, I can now start seeing the information here and seeing all of the insights again on the right. Just natural, plain text. It's telling me what's going on here. But if you notice, it's combining and comparing these two data sets. So that way I know what's common and what areas to really hone in on my focus. So that way I'm not going down that wild goose chase and I got my specific actions that I need to take in both of those states to now help me drive and meet that metric of 35 days. So you got pickle in the middle and the mustard on top.